Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and get started and folks will, as folks come in. So good afternoon. My name is Beth Orero. I'm the program manager from IDSA working on the GERM program. I will be facilitating this webinar and I will be the GERM program liaison throughout the application award and research process. Um, Dr. Montplaisir and Dr. Shinoi will provide an overview of the process and we welcome questions in the chat. Um, I want to let you know that there will be time to answer the questions at the end of the presentation. So um, here, the agenda presented on my screen consists of starting with introductions, um, and then we'll provide an overview of the GERM program and its impact, um, reviewing the application guidelines and offering guidance for a strong research proposal, expectations of the application, and then we'll open it up for questions. And so um, I'm going to start with introducing our chair and vice chair. And so Dr. Florence um, Montpazier is an professor in the Division of Infectious Diseases, um, and she is the Vice Chief for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in ID and Senior Fellow of the Penn Lerner Davis Institute of Health Economics. Um, her clinical research focuses on improving postpartum retention and viral suppression of women living with HIV and on decreasing racial disparities in HIV prevalence among U.S. populations. She currently has three R01 grants focusing on peer-led and organization behavioral interventions to improve HIV care continuum outcomes of people living with HIV and implement organizational level interventions to improve HIV care continuum outcomes. Um, she has con longitudinally mentored trainees across the academic ladder, including undergraduate students, medical students, masters in public health students in ID and across other disciplines. Um, she served as core director of the CIFAR implement implementation science in Philadelphia to end the HIV epidemic regional scientific work working group um, from 2020 to 2023, and will serve as a director of the PAN um, CIFAR implementation science course starting July 2023. She also co-leads the um, CIFAR diversity, equity, and inclusion pipeline initiative with the aim of increasing the pool of interested and academically prepared underrepresented minorities, students for careers in biomedical research or academic medicine with an interest in HIV research. Um, under her leadership, the number of available sl slots for scholars has increased significantly each year and the magnitude of her mentorship is demonstrated by the receipt of the Harvey M. Friedman ID Faculty Mentoring Award in 2022, um, the CIFAR Pen Red Ribbon Research Award in 2022, and the ID Junior Faculty Outstanding Investigator Award 2023. Um, Dr. Montplaisir, we're really happy to have you and really honored to have you serve as the chair for the GERM Committee. Um, and then for our vice chair, Dr. Sheila Shinoy, she is an associate professor of medicine in the AIDS program of the section of infectious disease and associate director of the Office of Global Health at Yale University School of Medicine. She conducts clinical research on tuberculosis and HIV AIDS with a focus on resource limited settings. Um, she evaluates strategies to improve diagnosis, linkage, and retention in care in prison settings and exploring the role of community-based services to facilitate implementation. She prioritizes prevention strategies and integration of HIV and TB services. Um, Dr. Sheila, we are really um, 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 we are happy to have you and really um, thank you for serving as the vice chair for the GERM committee. Um, I would also like to introduce um, our program director. Um, her bio is not on here, but she'll introduce herself. Her name is Dr. Amari Pearson Fields and she will introduce herself and give an overview of the GERM impact before handing it over to the chair and vice chair. Good afternoon and welcome. My name uh, as Beth said, is Dr. Amari Pearson Fields. I am the Director of Programs at the Infectious Diseases Society of America. Uh, I've been with the organization for going on two years. The GERM grant is one of the research programs that is within my portfolio. We also fund 
the Alzheimer's um, program looking at infectious processes as the etiology for Alzheimer's disease. We also provide support for our mentors or our mentees uh, across ID, be they fellows or medical students, et cetera. Uh, our germ program is a five-year program. Um, we have uh, received funding for this program from a variety of sources. And over the course of five years, we have had more than 300 applicants and have provided research funds to 146 grantees, totaling about $484,000 over our five grant cycles. This is a presentation of just three of the unique programs that we have funded. As you can tell, we have funded a number of programs. And if you're interested in learning more about the types of research that we fund, you can go to the idsafoundation.org website and the GERM page will have information about all of our grantees and the research topics that they um, have been investigating over the years. So with that, I will turn it over to our chair and co-chair to lead the rest of our presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Beth and Amari, um, and also Sheila uh, for um, uh, being involved in this wonderful program. And, and the goal is to go through uh, slides. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, we do have some time dedicated at the end uh, for questions. Um, so just to uh, start, um, I, I want to say that the, the goal of the GERM is to be as inclusive as possible in terms of who we fund. Obviously, there is an interest to increase early exposure to infectious disease research, but all types of research generally is encouraged. Um, so um, in the past, we have funded projects in basic science, epidemiology, uh, or clinical research, medical education, structured clinical experiences, which people don't really think about, but particularly in um, situations where um, exposure to ID uh, clinicians is, is limited, we encourage that to, to occur. Obviously, it's not the majority of our applications, but I want to uh, highlight that this is also an option. And also quality improvement or program evaluation, uh, 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 program evaluations. And so uh, our scope is, is very broad in general. Um, and uh, we cover a year of uh, longitudinal mentored research um, and uh, participants receive a $4,000 stipend um, that they can use toward their research, travel, or any costs associated with, with, with their uh, project. Next. Um, and the other benefit that we want to highlight is the opportunity to be a member of the Infectious Disease Society of America. Um, and as an IDSA member, um, there are a few perks uh, that uh, are associated with that, including access to uh, our electronic ID journals, uh, which are uh, clinical infectious diseases, um, but also GID, the Journal of Infectious Diseases. Um, there are also associated online uh, journals like Open Forum Infectious Diseases that are uh, accessible for free, but at least you get those journals um, uh, free of charge. Um, and also um, you get access to a curated content in the GERM uh, platform. And actually um, in a second, I'll let Amari speak to that a little bit more because uh, this is something that we're trying to expand and have people use. Um, one year of mentored research opportunity. Um, and this is important because um, we want to make sure that, um, you know, you have an established relationship with a mentor who can help you uh, for your project. Uh, and if you don't, that you reach out to us um, because we do have um, the mechanism to identify a, a mentor who can help you with your project. Um, the, the, the whole point is that you're not doing this alone, that you should have support uh, for this year-long uh, mentorship experience. Um, you also get discounted um, ID uh, the, for, for our conference, the ID week registration, 
Um, this is to be determined, but that's one of the things that we're working on and also um, a, a potential uh, travel uh, stipend. Um, and if that's okay, Omari, I'm gonna let you speak a little bit more on the, the germ platform. Okay, there you go. Okay, so um, so in terms of the uh, the the curated content, um, so um, um, in terms of uh, it, it's really sort of a electronic platform where um, there could be community being built um, and where um, people can um, really come together. Uh, and for example, creating messaging uh, boards where um, there could be exchange of ideas for research topics and, and also opportunities to create more collaboration. Um, and Beth and Amari, I just want to make sure because this is fairly new that I'm not missing anything else or that you don't have anything else to add to that section. No? Okay. All right. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so who can I apply? Uh, you, this, uh, the the germ is open to first, second, or third year medical students um, from an accredited, accredited uh, allopathic or osteopathic medical school in the U.S. Um, people can be in the combined MD, MPH, or MD PhD program. the The most important thing is if you already are involved in ongoing research is to explain clearly in your application the added value of the germ project, um, because we're not interested in, in um, funding projects where people could do the research without germ. We really want to be able to have impact and, and really support people who, um, you know, have a new idea or think about an extension of their of their research if they're already engaged in, in their in a research program. Um, particip uh, applicants need to be U.S. citizens or permanent residents uh, pursuing medical school outside the U.S., but um, interested in working in the U.S., so including Carib Caribbean and offshore institutions. Um, and so the goal is to really um, build the, the U.S. medical workforce in infectious diseases. Next. Okay, so some of the frequently asked questions are, does GERM support uh, qualitative research projects? Uh, absolutely, yes. As I mentioned before, we are interested in all kinds of ideas um, across the spectrum of you know, basic science to QI projects. Um, and, and so qualitative research definitely falls um, in, into this. Does a project need to focus on a single infectious disease? Uh, and projects need to be related to the field of ID or HIV. Um, but um, uh, so as example, projects related to public health, antibiotic stewardship and resistance vaccine or vaccinations have been funded. So, so the whole point is to really focus on an infectious disease or, um, or um, something related to public health, but that overlaps with, with ID. Uh, can funding be used to cover the cost of travel expenses? Yes. Uh, the stipends can be used to support travel related to the project. We have, for example, uh, from year to year applicants who are doing uh, research uh, outside of the U.S. And um, some of them actually apply their stipend for travel expenses, and that's totally appropriate. Um, the use of the, uh, of the stipend for living expenses also is allowed to protect time to complete the project. And for more information, the you can visit um, or frequently ask uh, question um, as part of the the germ uh, web page. Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, should we? Okay, I don't know if you wanted to pause for questions or go straight to the next section. Yeah, we can pause if anyone has any questions. And um, if you don't have any questions now, we can move forward. And then um, if you think of any, you can put them in the chat or ask at the end. Okay, so. So, um, 
and and Beth is should I continue here or yes I, please I, yeah we don't have any okay. questions please go on thank you okay perfect so in terms of a key element of a proposal um so for example um um you know each project needs to have a, a title and need to be categorized um um based on the type of research uh, being done next this is just an example next Beth, you can you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, so this is an example of the of a, a project where um, this particular participant um, is really working with a population of immigrants um, in the South, in in Miami, and um, highlighted here all the all the goals of the project, which are to identify. Uh, facilitators and barriers that recent immigrants face in um, in um, the sorry one second uh, for uh, sexual health services uh, SHS. Um, so the 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 applicant describes that individual and community factors important in access sexual health services and HIV prevention practices will be included in the assessment and the study will evaluate facilitators and barriers as perceived by the participant in the University of Miami uh, PrEP mobile clinic. Uh, data from different immigrant groups and sampling location throughout Miami will be compared to generate culture specific knowledge and the data will be used to refine uh, UM's mobile prep clinic to reach greater numbers of at-risk individuals. So the reason why we're highlighting this is um, to say that it's very important um, in your projects that you think of a very specific question that you want to answer. This needs to be very laid out in, in your project. Um, and here, it's very also important to, to explain why your measurements will be um, and how, you know, for example, here, how you plan, th this participant plans on evaluating barriers and facilitators and how the data will be used um, to for next steps. Um, so um, it's it's very important. I can't emphasize that enough um, that you start very early on when you draft your proposal to think of the research questions that you are trying to answer. Um, make sure that whatever you are um, measuring is actually feasible, um, and that this the work can be done within a year period. Um, and, and so this is an example that we're providing just to, um, you know, illustrate um, that uh, it's, it's really important to um, clarify what, what the goals and the evaluation methods uh, will be in your proposal. Next. Okay. So here, uh, for example, um, the there is uh, a little bit more detail provided in the the actual proposal in terms of the survey. Um, so here, um, the applicant mentions the partnership that um, he or she has with their mentor, um, and a relationship with your mentor, and actually how often you plan to meet with them, um, is important for um, the view the reviewers to assess the support and the mentorship that you'll be receiving, right, from, from your mentor. Um, but also it's important to um, explain uh, the process that you will um, be undertaking for your project. So in this particular example, um, this uh, participant will develop and validate a, a survey um, where they will include STI symptoms, stigma related measures, uh, societal uh, facilitators and barriers, barriers to access to care, um, geographic convenience and financial deterrence. So all of that will go into the, the survey development. Um, and because uh, uh, in this proposal, the goal is to work mostly with a Spanish speaking population, um, there's uh, a plan for translation in English and uh, in Spanish. So again, showing that you have a good understanding of the population that you're serving, that you'll be working with your mentor, even if you don't have 
Um, sometimes it's better to use validated surveys, but even if you don't have access to that, that there's a clear plan as to um, how you will uh, develop the, the measures that you'll be using um, during the, the research. Uh, in terms of survey implementation, um, so the, this, this survey, for example, will be delivered to patients um, uh, who are visiting a, a, a prep mobile clinic. Um, and, and so again, explaining who the patient population is, how you will have access to them, um, is, is very important. Um, and of, obviously, um, if, you know, in this case, um, obtaining informed consent is very important. Um, and, you know, this may or may not apply to your research, but it's important that you, you think about, um, uh, about this, um, you know, in your application. And then interpretation and application of the results. So the surveys will be combined with socioeconomic status and health data um, collected by the clinic standard patient evaluations. Uh, facilitators and barriers to care will be presented descriptively and short form qualitative data will be coded thematically and analyzed using a, a modified and grounded theory approach. And as, a, um, as an applicant, you might not be familiar with, for example, um, what a modifying grounded theory approach means, but working with your mentor, particularly if you're going to be doing qualitative analysis, is very important, right? Um, so we want to make sure that even though you don't have all the expertise needed for your project, that you're working with a team that can help you um, throughout that one-year period to, um, to, to um, uh, complete uh, your project. And, and always think of next steps. So what is the, beyond just measuring what you're measuring, uh, what will be the impact for the population that you're serving? So just think about highlighting that in your proposal. Okay. So how do you and your mentor plan to engage in the project? This is actually very important. Don't neglect that section because we wanna make sure, again, that you will receive adequate support um, and if your mentor is very busy, that at least you will have access to the, uh, a, a clear mentorship team who will be able to, to support you throughout your project. So, um, you know, the mentorship structure should be well uh, detailed uh, in your proposal. So in this uh, uh, application, um, the applicant is planning on meeting with uh, their mentor weekly through emails or check-ins for the development of the survey. So um, weekly is, uh, you know, is uh, is very appropriate for, for this context. Sometimes the mentor is not uh, physically located in the same um, institution than you, um, and that is okay. But as long as there is a clear plan for meetings, um, you know, people do a lot of virtual um, meetings, uh, even if it's not face-to-face, I think that's appropriate as well, but there needs to be a clear plan as to how often uh, you're planning on meeting with them. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, survey and implementation, so their mentor will help coordinating scheduling and survey implementation, particularly um, when um, usually the mentor has access to the patient population. Um, and so explaining how this will be done will be very important. Um, and then interpretation and application of results, the mentor will meet to discuss, you know, how to interpret the results of the survey and discuss the analysis of the data. Um, and uh, again, um, we don't expect you to have all the expertise, but there needs to be a clear plan for mentorship support um, so that, um, you know, we want you to take the lead, obviously, and learn as much as you can um, and, and take ownership of your project but I think it's important to realize that there will be limitation both in terms of content expertise and access. Um, and so explaining how your mentor will help um, coordinate all these things will, is, is super helpful. Next. Okay. So uh, why are you interested in pursuing an infectious disease or HIV related research? This is important because the goal of GERM is to allow early access to infectious disease, either 
um, research or, or uh, exposure to a clinical ID. And so we are very invested in um, building the ID workforce, right? And so in your application, obviously be honest. <laughs> if you're not interested in ID or, or HIV research or clinical work, um, I, you know, I think it's important to, uh, to be honest about what your goals are, your career goals are. Um, it's, it's also, um, we also acknowledge that people don't know a hundred percent, um, if they want to do ID and they might use germ as a mechanism to get exposure and figure out if that's something that is a good fit for them. And that is totally fine. Um, but, uh, we are definitely interested in people who, have interest or potential interest um, in infectious diseases. So um, it's important to describe this well, describe your research interests and describe your professional goals and how this project will help advance them. And, and it's important to be as specific as possible. Okay, so how would the germ grant be used to support your project? Um, so this, this um, is important in terms of helping us understand also the feasibility of, of um, um, your, your project. So for example, uh, with the uh, example that we reviewed where uh, uh, the, the, the germ uh, applicant is gonna provide a survey to, to patients, you can imagine that those patients might be compensated to, um, to complete the survey. And, and so, you know, thinking of providing uh, compensation uh, to study participants is actually totally appropriate. Um, if you're doing a basic science project and you need um, to um, buy something for your experiment, that's totally allowed. Um, and, and so um, it, it's, you know, just think of the budget as a way to making your project possible. Now funding in excess of, uh, so proper compensation will be determined by my mentor and relevant community partners upon receiving the grant. So this is the language that was provided as an example. Um, funding in excess of this would be used for living expenses during the study time, especially if it falls outside of the standard loan period. So again, the, the, the stipend that you're receiving can be used to uh, complement your living um, expenses um, but not all of it. So there should be a part, obviously, that goes to the cost of doing the research um, itself. Okay. So um, in terms of mentor plus additional uh, support, um, you should let your mentor know that they will be asked to upload a letter of recommendation and their NIH BioSketch or CV as part of the application package, uh, you will also obviously need to provide their name and contact information. Um, and also describe other individuals invo involved or sources of support and their role in the project. So for example, some students have an ongoing uh, funded research project, but they think of a secondary question and that's okay. Um, but being transparent about already available sources of funding and how the germ will help enhance your project is important. Um, and if you are going to work with a mentorship team, who those individuals are um, and how they will be involved will also uh, be helpful. Um, and again, if you have a wonderful research idea but you don't have an established mentor, um, you can uh, contact us. Um, and we can help um, help you navigate uh, this this aspect of of the project. Okay. Now, in terms of project scoring and uh, scoring criteria, um, these are the the criteria that we um, take under consideration uh, for our uh, evaluation. So the rel relevance of the project. So for example, if you're planning on measuring a thousand things, but none of them are necessarily impactful or relevant, you know, it's not really interesting because it's not moving the field forward. So think of research topics where um, you will be adding to the existing knowledge um, base. And so 
what I would encourage you to do is even before you start thinking of your research project, do a literature review, try to see what's been published in the topic before and how your question will add to um, the existing literature. Um, the structure of the mentorship plan, as we discussed earlier, uh, interest in infectious disease or HIV, contribution to diversity defined broadly to include population underrepresented in medicine, geography, program size, and uh, academic uh, focus. And so think uh, broadly um, in terms of, um, you know, your, your needs um, and, um, and also your, your access to ID or ID programming or ID research. All of, all of those things are things that we take under consideration in the application. And strength of the project plan as it relates to increasing the applicant's analytical research and clinical skills. Um, and, and one other thing under project plan that I want to emphasize is feasibility. Um, because you, you, you only have one year, you could think that one year is a lot of time, but it goes really fast, particularly because you are still in, in medical school. And so, um, um, you know, make sure that your, your research, uh, plan is, is really feasible, um, and can be done during that one year period. Next. Okay, so um, in terms of application checklist, big picture, obviously you need to submit your application. Um, you need to also have your CV um, ready um, and have someone review it before you submit it. Um, and you need to have your mentor letter of recommendation and your mentor NIH Biosketcher CV. Uh, and the deadline this year is February 7th. Thank you, okay. Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Montplaisir. And so we, I'm going to stop sharing the presentation and open it up for questions. I see, um, okay, we don't have any questions in the chat, um, but I'm going to open it up if anybody has any questions. You can type them in the chat or you can raise your hand and ask the question. Any questions? Um, no question is too trivial to ask. Any lingering questions about the application process or mentorship or? Hello, um, I have a question. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I had a joint lay, I was coming from another meeting. And so I might've missed this, but um, does being an uh, MD PhD student, I saw that you're still eligible to apply. Uh, does that affect any um, uh, your scoring, I guess? Is that involved for consideration in terms of getting accepted? Yeah, no, no, it doesn't at all. You're definitely encouraged to apply. I think what you need to make clear is that, I mean, we're not interested in funding a research that you're that will be accomplished without the germ grant, if that makes sense, because you're already involved in doing research. Um, we want to make sure that the germ grant has an added value to your research. And so um, if you give me an example of what you're studying research wise. Uh, hospital acquired infections broadly. Yeah. Okay. So if you're studying uh, hospitalized acquired infections, you know, if you have a secondary question, so for example, if you want to see if there are gender based differences in, you know, hospitalized acquired infection uh, outcomes, you know, that's a secondary question to your larger question, and you could use the germ grant for that, and that would be appropriate. But I think it would be important to make clear what is departing from your primary research and what the germ project will be adding um, to your existing line of work, if, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that clears things up. And um, so we should specify in the application how this may be distinct from what we currently do, right? Absolutely, it's critical. It's critical Perfect. that you do that. Yes. Thank you. Um, and Joelle, I see you have a question. Go for it. If you can unmute. 
yeah, I just left my question um, in the chat, but I guess I was wondering, um, as like an M1 student applying with uh, like a newly established mentor mentee relationship, what would be expected for my mentor to write given that like in the letter of recommendation, you know, we just, I guess, got to know each other. <laughs> Yeah, and that's totally appropriate. I don't want you to feel bad about this um, because unlike, you know, Scott, who probably already has a mentorship team established, we totally welcome new partnerships, right? We realize that you're actually in medicine, you're in training. And so um, we you won't get dinged for having a new um, me mentored um, mentorship uh, relationship. But I think in your case, particularly if it's a new relationship, it'll be important for you and your mentor to highlight any existing, um, uh, even if it's not collaboration in terms of research, but like if you uh, shadow this individual, or if you knew this person, you know, in any capacity, um, that that would be helpful. Um, but even if you don't, even if you don't have a track record of working together in any capacity, um, that's where having a clear mentorship plan is important, right? Like how often are you meeting and being specific about it'll be in person, a group meeting, it'll be, you know, virtual, um, you know, the frequency, um, all of this will be important to help the review panel understand the support that you'll be getting, um, and so I would ask you and your mentor to be very specific. And the other thing that um, we take under consideration is in inconsistencies. And so if you're saying that you're going to meet with your mentor weekly and your mentor is saying that he's going to, he or she is going to meet with you monthly, that's a problem, right? Um, and, and so just to make sure that you meet ahead of time and that you agree on uh, the mentorship plan together and that there's consistency um, in the application. Okay, great, thank you so much. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think um, it may be helpful if it's a new relationship to just clarify that um, the mentors clarified in their letter that they've met with you X number of times and spent you know X many hours kind of preparing this proposal together and that you've gone over the details and they feel that you're adequately prepared and uh, capable of doing this project, um, how, how, you know, and, and also, especially if they have expertise or experience in this area, that uh, will be helpful to emphasize. Um, or if it's a new area, also being clear about what resources um, they have to offer you um, to accomplish the project. Um, hey, everyone. I had a quick question. Thank you um, for the presentation today. I had a quick question if the the scoring will be impacted for like a proposed project that is the analysis of like already existing data that has been captured before, or if there needs to be, you know, a data collection or like a study um, component. Thank you. Yeah, so um, um, analysis of a secondary data is totally appropriate as long as it's a new question, right? So you don't have to necessarily only uh, propose primary data collection. So for example, the example that I provided, the, the, the applicant was gonna um, administer a survey to um, uh, uh, the mobile prep clinic um, users. Um, that, that's appropriate, but also if you have an existing database, right, and um, and you are interested in exploring a research question, um, that, that's totally appropriate. Um, and so we definitely encourage primary or secondary uh, data analysis. Okay, thank you. You've said to be clear, I think, about... Um... As Dr. Mopasir said and during uh, her earlier remarks about how the resources are going to be used, because if you're not going to be using them to do the primary data collection as part of the overall project, how are you going to spend your time? What are the milestones? What How are the resources going to be overall used? Oh, great. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it.
And I'll just happen to add a, a couple of things. I've been on this program uh, for about a year. And, and one of the things that I have noticed is that all of the applications come in at the last minute. Um, so I encourage you to um, submit your application early. Uh, a lot of people have uh, written their application and edited in Word and then pasted it into the tool, the application tool. That is something that we definitely recommend. Um, making sure that you're reviewing and completing each of the sections within the application and get your application in early. We have about a hundred or so people that submit applications. When you wait to the last minute, there's always something that happens, um, just kind of the way things go, Murphy's Law. But if you do run into any challenges when you're doing your submissions, please reach out to us. Uh, reach out to Beth at the germ uh, email address or at her personal email address, and we will be monitoring that email box uh, during the day and into the evening so that we can help you facilitate and get the applications in on time. I will say also that you are the first cohort that is going through our sort of expanded program. We are modeling this program now after our mentorship program in which we are really providing additional support and education resources and tools to our grantees in a way that we haven't in the future. So there will be a curriculum of webinars that you will have access to on research methodology. There will also be group discussions around how do you uh, do qualitative data analysis? How do you ensure confidentiality? How do you work with a data, a, a statistician or an analyst? How do you analyze your data for qualitative data versus quantitative data. If you are engaged in your research and you have questions that come up that your mentor isn't able to handle or you don't wanna to pose to your mentor, you can always bring it to the group uh, and ask other your colleagues how they have dealt with certain things. Um, we are also providing information on what are some of the activities or meetings or conferences that are happening across infectious disease that you may be interested in attending. Who are the thought leaders in ID that you may wanna follow on social media, for example, those types of resources and tools will be available to you. So we really are moving into an enhanced program um, this year. So we're really excited to have you all participate in it and I, uh, really hope that you are able to submit your applications uh, and that they are positively reviewed. Our, our funding is about 50%. So we fund about half of the proposals that get submitted. So they are very strong. It is competitive, but our goal really is to provide funding. Um, so based on the amount of money that we have to support are awardees, we will be funding anywhere from 40 to 50 grantees. Thanks, Amari. And I, I just wanna add, someone asked, um, you know, if there's an opportunity to connect with other germ supportive students, and that's part of the enhanced experience that Amari is talking about. We really want to have that learning and collaboration and building of a community. And so, um, once, if you do um, get an award and you are on the platform, there's going to be a lot of engagement and part of it is going to be encouragement to attend ID Week and we do um, intend to have germ related events at ID Week for the first time next year. So um, yes to, um, to Jess's question. Um, and so there's a question from Dia asking if um, would a case series um, on a on a on a research question be um I'm sorry I can't for some reason I can't read the rest of it that, that's okay because I, I answered I through the question. chat but okay, yes, it's totally okay. appropriate okay um, right. as as long as again it's ID related right and that you're um uh answer you're filling in the gap right you're not sort of reinventing the wheel but you're contributing to the literature um, and as long as, again, that your project is feasible and doable in a year, it's it's totally fine. 
I think you just would want to make sure that the rigor of the case series is is upheld um, compared to other methodologies um, in terms of how reviewers uh, see the proposal. So if you but you're saying it's a new research question, then that should you know really heavily impact how reviewers see it. Any other questions? Okay, well, we look forward to reviewing every single application. Right, yeah. Hopefully you will submit it and you'll submit it early um, and we'll get to see you next year for ID yeah. Week. Thanks everyone. This link will be posted on the journal website by tomorrow. And so everyone will have a chance to re-review um, as they submit their applications. Yeah, thank you everybody and have a great holiday season. Yep, thank you. Thank you all. Yep, bye.